first say thank you for coming out to our um, BFF um, Beauty Fun and Fashion um, uh, Mixer Networking uh, Pretty Party, as we call it. So this is our, not our first, but it's our last of the year here. Um, from for the RL hotel so typically what we would do is come out to the RL hotel at least once a month and do a um, an event for she's the boss skincare and cosmetics or she's the boss radio and so there's a lot of things that's been going on this year and I'm super excited because we're back but it's the end of the year um, so you know going into a new year um, but tonight I wanted to again thank you all because it's raining I know I hope you all are enjoying the food and drinks and networking and shopping because it's that time of the year and I'm sorry okay give me a second um so we got a, a few things that's going to happen tonight we're going to do a demonstration we have my favorite makeup artist okay so I'm just so prejudiced so I'm sorry but it is what it is <laughs> we have our favorite um makeup artist here tonight who is Frederick Saunders I'm not Sanders sorry oh it's like you gave me that you gave me that look like, ooh. So I'm like, ooh. I'm, okay, I'm used to holding a microphone. I like to move around. I don't like to stand still. Um, so we have our favorite um, makeup artist here tonight. If you are in your rooms and you are listening and watching, please come down. We have what we call a pop-up shop in the game room area where the ladies have all types of gifts um, from body butters to jewelry and um, makeup that you can have for the holidays. So that that's always good. Um, and then we're going to do some... Um, some demonstrations so you can get an idea of how to kind of use these things and give you some holiday looks and um, things to do mix and match with your um, your outfits and what have you just to give you a little bit of information about she's the boss it's um, business owners that fast and strong where we promote personal and professional development and we use it um, use the makeup line and skincare lines to kind of help um, facilitate that um, so I'm going to be introducing a couple of people tonight that I'm very excited about going into the new year with, um, and as well as our vendors that are in the back. Ladies, are you ready? Don't I don't know where they are. Can you wrap your mouth? Um, so I'm going to introduce them and let you know what they have going on. Biz um, she's the boss. We like to promote businesses, um, being big businesses, small businesses, but we like to be like that, that resource, that network, and we kind of use the different platforms to kind of make that happen. Um, again, we're ha we're have, we have our um, brand ambassador. No, I like that. I like that. That sounds good, right? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> um, we have our brand ambassador here tonight, and I'm super excited about that. But before we introduce him, I wanted to introduce, and I want to say thank you to all of the She's the Boss um, team, because I know today was like the day from you nowhere, but you know what? God did it. We here. Everybody made it safe. Um, everybody going to make it home safe. We're going to have a good time tonight. Um, but with that being said, um, I have two special ladies that came out and wanted to show their products. And they're going to come up and they're going to give you a little bit of information about what they do and how you can get their products and how you can support um, their businesses. And then when I come back, I'm going to introduce um, Fred and I'm going to introduce our special model for tonight. Um, and I'm going to also introduce someone that's going to be joining the team. So with that being said, I'm going to int introduce... You're going to go first, Akila or okay, Akila? Okay, so Akila from Body Buy. And Akila's going to tell you all about her products. We're going to come up some because I'm not, this is the camera. And I just want to make sure that you're in the camera. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me. Yes, this has been awesome. She's a new entrepreneur. Everybody give it up for Akila. <laughs> you know, being an entrepreneur is a hard thing. So she's going to tell you all about her products and how you can they can get to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Um, good evening, everyone. This is fairly new to me. Um, so I created Body By because uh, my daughter was having issues growing up with eczema. She was the kid who would walk around looking scaly and scratching every which so way. And every, it seemed like every two, three weeks, we had to go get the prescription for the ointment. And I said to myself, there has to be a better way. Last summer, she just, she just, she's about to turn 20. 
So clearly it took me a long time. But last summer was my breaking point when she went in the pool and she came out and she was really, really, there was hives all, of her, all over her and she was burning. And she said, Ma, I need my ointment. And we went and got the ointment and the pharmacist was talking about the steroids in it. I can't do steroids, it's not good for our skin. So I said, there has to be a better way. Let me play around with it. And here we are three months later with Body Buy. Body Buy is um, made from all natural products. Um, they are body butters made from different butters such as shea butter and coconut oil and jojoba oil. I custom make a lot of the oils. I love to be able to see people get excited about their skin. Um, and recently, just as recently actually as yesterday, my daughter actually told me she's about to throw away her ointment because the, the, the body butter actually is working way better than the ointment, whereas the ointment she feels dry at the end of the day, the body butter actually sustains her until the next morning. So that for me was the turning point that made me say, okay, so I know that I'm doing God's work, right? I know that I'm doing what his, his, the things that are put on this earth naturally are supposed to do, putting them together. So um, I wanted to be able to uh, custom make items or body butters for people who say, you know, I like this fragrance. I'm not sure that my skin loves coconut oil. Can you do? I want to make them custom made for people who know their skin. I want us to get to know our skin and know what our skin loves. Um, and I also make sugar scrubs. We all like to make sure that our, we pamper ourselves when we get pedicures. Why not exfoliate our whole body? So all of my um, uh, products are all natural, made from all natural materials, raw materials. Um, and you can look me up on www.bodybuy.online or you can email me at info at bodybuyonline.com. Um, and are there any questions? Anything you are questioning about? So the body butters are, um, thank you for asking that question. The body butters are $20 pre-made, um, $35 if they're custom made because I not only um, make them for you, but I mail them to you or I bring them to you. The sugar scrubs are 15 pre-made and 25 custom made. Um, like I said, I do a lot of the products that I make um, uh, mail order. I can mail them to you. I can uh, bring them to you if you're local. Um, the set for body butter and a sugar scrub is $30. Uh, pre-made and I believe $40 uh, uh, if they're custom made and then I also sell uh, minis so that if you are the type of person that says well I, I really need a body butter for my desk at work or for my pocketbook or just for my car um, they're five dollars so right now I have pre-made scents. I have lavender, I have mango nella drop, I have chocolate. These are, I'm telling you the body butters. Um, I have chocolate, I have pumpkin, I have a scent called Some Nights, um, which is more floral, and I have Sunset on a Beach, which is floral, fruity. Um, I believe I said lavender. And then for the body scrubs, I have mango nella, I have um, pumpkin, I have chocolate, I have cinnamon, I have grapefruit vanilla, I have lemon drop candy. Um, and then again, like I said, I love to do custom make because I just love to play around with the different scents. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Akilah, to I told Akilah, you know I love you because you know she's the boss. We got all that type of stuff, but you know I love you, so we good. <laughs> we good. Um, so now I'm going to bring up, let me tell you, so the craze, like I love paparazzi people. Like 
I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to work with a paparazzi representative, but they don't play no games. You call, you say you need a, a jewelry person, and they they show up and they show out. So I love it. <laughs> so I'm bringing to the stage now Miss Nikki Savage of Savage Bling. Savage Diva Bling. Okay, I'm gonna let her tell y'all that one. Don't forget, don't forget the diva part, right? Thank you. So I didn't know that we were doing an infomercial today and I should have went before her because she has a lot to say. But uh, my name is Nikki Savage and I am a independent paparazzi consultant. We feature a line of $5 accessories. We also have an upline of the Z collection that are $25. But most of our stuff is $5. Everything you see that I have on, $5, right? See? Okay. So we like to be able to bring nice, classy looking, affordable jewelry and accessories. You should be able to dress nice, dress up, dress down, and be full of bling if you want to, or not. Uh, all different kind of stuff, but you should be able to do that on a budget, right? So when I come in, I wear my stuff. We say we wear it to share it, and I do. I wear my products. People see me and they're like, oh my God, that is not $5. Well, it is. Everything I wear is $5, except for my wedding ring, because I wouldn't let my husband get away with that. But uh, everything else, $5. So uh, you can always uh, shop with me on my website. It is www.savagedivabling.com. And yes, there are plenty of paparazzi consultants. They're all over the place, but we all have an eye for different things. So you might know one, but you might, have, you might go in the back and see some stuff that you didn't see from your consultant because we all have our own personal stores. We all have eyes for different things. So you can shop with different ones. If you have one that you already use, that's fine. I'm sorry, but check me out too, all righty? So everything is $5 that I bought here tonight. I have necklaces, earrings, rings, bracelets, just about everything, all right? So that's about it. I don't have a long um, story, but I'm glad to be here, and thank you for having me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have fun. We're going to play in makeup. It's time to play in some makeup. That's my favorite part. So that's how She's the, she's the Boss Skincare and Cosmetics was birthed. I played in makeup. So I'm super excited because I found somebody that is like, my sensei he teaches me how to play and make up and when I don't get it right he tells me I'm cute and when I know he says I'm cute then that's not right so I go take it off his when he says cute go, t go yeah go take it off <laughs> his version of cute and your version of cute not the same cute so with that being said I'm going to bring to the stage our my favorite celebrity makeup artist Frederick Sanders Yes, yes. Y'all know this face from everywhere. BET red carpet, meet the Browns. Like, oh, I love it. Like, wherever. <laughs> like, we taking pictures of the TV saying, Fred, we saw you. Like, <laughs> and we see Fred everywhere. So Fred's going to give you his story and, and tell you a little bit how we all kind of connected a little bit. And then he's going to talk about the theme for tonight, what we're going to do for tonight um, to get you ladies ready for the holiday. Thank you so much. You guys that know me know I really don't need a microphone, but I'm gonna play by the rules. And I'm gonna try to um, stay close to this, just to give a little talk to kinda warm up the room a little bit. I'm very excited to have everybody here. Thank you for coming. Give yourself some, yeah. Yeah, the trials and tribulations of getting here sometimes is a little bit difficult, but you know, the, the push through is what's important. So I'm grateful to have you guys here. Um, a little bit about me. I know you guys who have been here, the team, you've heard this story a million times. You could probably come and say it for me, but I want to share it with the people who I have not had the opportunity to be in front of. So um, Frederick Sanders, picture me, young guy, growing up in Atlanta, Georgia. You can hear the accent. You can't shake that for some reason. Growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, deep south, um, living currently in New Jersey. Um, um, by way of New York City, by way of LA, by way of DC, but you know, that's, a, that's another story for a different night, maybe a different class, but um, so, born in Georgia, um, the youngest I, of four kids, my parents have um, three daughters and a son, and I'm the son, of course, and <laughs> just in case you were wondering, but um, I, why am I losing my words tonight? Y'all know I'm not shy. I'm like, what's going on? I just kind of lost my whole situation. No, the lights, I, I like the lights. That's what makes me come to life. 
Yeah, I get I'm ready to perform when I see the lights. But no, seriously, um, I started out. I, I I had no idea what I was going to be. You know, I I'm, I'm a believer in God. I believe that God directs your path, and when you follow the path that God sets in front of you, sometimes it looks a little scary. But when you follow that path, you really can reach your destiny. And I'm all, I'm all about reaching my destiny because when I reach my destiny, I think I make the Father happy, and I want I want to be pleasing to the Father. So you know, and if and if. People in their rooms don't don't worship God. I'm sorry, but you know I do, so I'm going I'm going to speak on that. But um, I just want to say that um, I was I was a school teacher. I graduated from Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, foreign language, international business. I speak three languages fluently. Um, I was thinking I was going to travel the world. I was going to be a, a an attorney, but I didn't want to I didn't want to take the bar or any of that stuff. I just wanted to consult. I felt like I was going to consult, I was going to do some corporate law, and I was going to fly all around the world and teach all of these companies that are in other countries how to build businesses here in the United States. That was my plan. Um, so I learned all the languages, and I thought I was, you know, doing what I was supposed to do. Um, but um, there's a story of, of, a, of a guy in the Bible that was riding his horse one day. He was on his, he was on his mule, and God literally threw him off, of, off the back of the donkey and changed his life, changed his name. That's kind of like what happened to me. I was walking through Herald Square, New York City. That's the largest department store in the world. It's a Macy's department store, and it has like nine floors. It's huge. You can literally spend the day there if you've never gone. Treat yourself to that. But um, I was actually walking through Macy's Herald Square, briefcase in hand, suit and tie, and I had gone to New York for the summer. It was that's a whole other story about how I got there for the summer. But you know, I w I just I knew that I was where I was supposed to be. Sometimes we we're in our lives, we're in our paths, and we start to wonder like, well, why am I here? Why am I doing this? You know, you, you're wondering like, God, did you forget me? I know that there's a promise for me, but you're trying to figure it out. Trust me when I tell you. Speaking from experience, you're right where you're supposed to be. I don't care if you're 69 years old and you still haven't met your destiny, but you're still believing God and you're still standing in that place. You are exactly where you're supposed to be because God is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He promised us that and if you believe that you'll know that you're right where you're supposed to be. So take a breath and relax because he got you. He's got you. And I can say that because I was on my way to law school and I thought that like, you know, I'm going to spend the summer in New York and it's just going to be, you know, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go to law school and it's going to be amazing for me. Um, but my amazing happened to stop me in, in New York. I got knocked off of my mule walking through that, that Herald Square. And it's not by chance that things happen. You know, we think, oh, this just happened. It just, all of a sudden, I ran into this person. No, it, it, was, it was divine order. You were where you were supposed to be. So for me, my divine order was walking through that Macy's store. It was raining. I was supposed to be on the sidewalk on the outside of that store, going to my destination, briefcase in hand. And as I'm walking through, I'm seeing... Coming up to the Mac counter, this was back in the day when Mac had to choose you. You couldn't choose Mac. And if you guys know anything about makeup or heard any of the stories about makeup, you could go and apply at Mac all you wanted to. But if they weren't choosing you, you weren't going to work there. No matter what you look like, no matter what family you came from, no matter if they didn't want you, you were not going to be there, period. So this was during that time, and I walked past, and these people were having, they were having a good time. You know, everybody had their own style. Everybody was, like, doing their own thing. And I felt like that was important. That was an important part of my life that I was missing out on because here I am, clean cut. I had just started locking my hair at that time. So, you know, I was a little in that little weird phase where, like, you know, offices weren't really, you know, taking to me and certain school systems weren't really taking to me because of my look. But that's neither here nor there. So as I'm walking through, I'm like, this is the kind of work I want to do. These guys are having fun. They're excited. They look like they're happy to be here. And they, they look like they're here on purpose. Like they have a purpose in being here and they're happy to walk in that purpose. I want to be here. So I literally walked over to the counter and said, hey guys, I want to work here. They looked at me. They kind of looked at each other. They looked back at me up and down. And they said, okay, we're going to get the manager. We'll be right back. So I was like, okay, you know, go get the manager. I, let me talk to who I need to talk to. And I don't know where this confidence came from because I, I didn't know anything about makeup. You know, I used to model. So when I modeled, there was, you know, me wearing makeup but I never knew anything about the application so anyway the manager came down she gave me the same look kind of up and down and she literally sent me to um she said let's go have a talk so I went and talked you know I thought we were just having a little discussion but she was actually interviewing me on the spot she inter long story short she interviewed me I got the job I was working at Macy's three days a week part-time 25 hours 25 hours is not a lot of time when you you know living in New York City and you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself, but somehow, you know, when God puts his hand on stuff, you know, it, it just happens. I was working three days a week, and I was literally making more money 
weekly than I was as a teacher full time. So let that sit in for a minute because some of y'all didn't get it yet. I worked three days a week, three days a week, 25 hours. Those three days were more money than what I made as a full time school teacher. Five days a week, having to do aftercare, having to be a track coach, having to grade papers on my free time. Three days a week. The other four days, because there's seven in a week, in case y'all didn't know, there's seven. So those other four days, I was free to do what I wanted to do. That gave me a chance to live. Some of us, we're, some of us are merely existing. Some of us in this room are just existing. And I'm preaching right, and I ain't got my Bible open. I'm just letting y'all know. Some of, some of us in this room are merely existing, which means you get up. You don't understand your purpose. You just go. You get to your desk at work. You're unhappy. You, you get in a mood. You're unhappy. Nobody wants to approach you. And all of this is just because you're simply existing. It's quiet in here, so I know I'm talking to somebody, right? Okay? So you're simply existing. And that means that God has given us a chance to live. This is your time to live. And I hope that in this little class that we're doing tonight and in this little story that I'm sharing with you, it opens up your eyes and gives you the opportunity to live because there's life in all of us and we need to live. If there's something that's inside of you and you never let it out, you're not doing yourself an injustice. You're doing the world an injustice because God gave you something to share with the world. Our gifts are to share, not to keep to ourselves. So taking that back, I had the gift of makeup. I never knew how important the gift of makeup was. You know, we think of a makeup artist with a brush, sit in a chair, make you look pretty. But there is something that I build self-esteem daily. I help people solve problems daily. I make people do sometimes just smile. Something that they've, they've lost over time. So that's a part of my ministry. And, it, and it's something that we need to like open up and share. So tonight, as we're playing in makeup, I'm hoping that it'll spark something in you. Your gift may not be in makeup. Your gift may be in selling makeup. Your gift may be in bringing people to makeup artists. There's a gift in all of us that we have to kind of kind of make work together because people, people, we, people, we're the ones that make the world go round. Not Donald Trump, not his cabinet, but we as the people that are, that are walking in our purpose are the ones that makes the, the world go around. So we got we to remember that. So um, I know I'm a little bit off topic, but we're going to get back to makeup, I promise, because y'all looking at me like, I didn't come here for this. I came here for some makeup. But I'm going to give y'all some makeup tips. So when you guys get out of here tonight, you'll be able to do, if nothing else, you'll be able to understand why eyeshadow is important and the proper way to wear it. Is that okay? Okay. Because I, I, I see some tragic situations. Uh, oh, I'm going to do it. Because the people need to hear this. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I can be on the train in the mornings going to New York City, and I look to my left or sometimes to my right or sometimes both, and there is a tragedy in this world today that we need to fix with makeup. <laughs> the next time I'm out in public and I see one of my sisters with blue eyeshadow from here to here, we're going to have a discussion. I'm going to pull you over. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me help you. We got we to gotta fix this. You know, this is an emergency. So you, and and y'all laughing because y'all have seen some of the same situations, right? Yeah. One thing that I'm going to say, let me look around and make sure nobody's doing it before I say it. Okay. 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 One thing that I absolutely hate, and if I ever see you doing it, I'm going to tackle you on, 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 on the spot. It's going to be a contact sport on the spot. If I see you walking down the street with a black eyeliner on your lips we gonna have some problems when you look at the little label it says eyeliner eyeliner is meant for the eyes do not put it on your lips if you can find yourself a black lip liner I might forgive you for wearing it but I can almost promise you you're not gonna find a black lip liner Unless it's something related to fashion and you're on a fashion runway doing some fashionable things. But these little black lines around the lip, we're going to have some problems. Please buy yourself a brown lip liner. Who does not own a brown lip liner in here today? Let me see your hand. If you do not own a brown lip liner. Okay. Okay. If you do not own a brown lip liner, we're going we're gonna to see you right back there at that little table so we can get you written up for a brown eyeliner. Um, lip liner. Lip liner, like y'all got me confused. 
confusion is of the devil. <laughs> and when I see that black liner, I'm confused. So that black liner is what? The devil. Of the devil. Y'all, y'all preaching, y'all preaching, y'all preaching. Get that basket because it's time for the offering. Y'all in here preaching. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a comedian, so I want you guys to relax yourselves. I want you to enjoy yourselves. Please feel free to ask me as many questions as you want. You know, jump in anytime. You are not being rude. Let's make it a conversation. Can we do that? Okay, so our focus tonight is going to be on eyes. I'm going to teach you a holiday eye look. Now, the colors that I'm going to use for you, I don't really know what they are. I just got some over here. So um, the colors that we're going to use, you can use any color you like. You just have to make sure you finish the look. So sometimes they'll, they'll, you'll go past the MAC counter. And we like to use MAC because everybody kind of knows MAC, but there are a lot of other, other wonderful brands. Um, She's the Boss is a wonderful brand. But like we, we like to use, um, oh, absolutely. It's all through my kit. I love it. Yes. Yes, she's the boss, goes with me everywhere. When y'all see me on, on doing the runways for Fashion Week or you see me teaching classes in Portland, Oregon or you see me with client X or Y or Z, you know, just know that there's some she's the boss that's gonna be on their face at some point because it's in my kit. But anyway, that's just, that's just my favorite, my favorite. I feel like Oprah during Christmas. You get she's the boss, you get she's the boss, you get she's the boss, but make sure y'all bring your credit cards, okay? Okay, that's important, that's important. We gotta have those, gotta have those. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. Don't, don't y'all get me warmed up. I got a little amen corn over here. <laughs> but no, seriously. So, um, we're, but the, the look that I'm going to show you tonight, I'm going to choose a color that we're going to use. And you can literally use any color you, lo you want to, to create this look. But you just have to learn to finish the look. What I mean by finishing the look, we wake up in the morning and we put that eyeshadow on, whatever color it is. You know, the ladies, you know, my sisters, they like gold. Yeah, I know y'all like gold because I see it on y'all all the time. Put that gold eyeshadow on. It could be shimmer. Y'all have shimmer done fell out all over here, and y'all won't care. Y'all will be in, in the store just smiling with this gold eyeshadow. <laughs> I know I'm telling the truth. I'm in somebody's business. <laughs> So, um, but the problem is, you can wear the gold eyeshadow, it looks amazing, but you don't know how to finish it. And when you don't know how to finish it, that creates the problem. So, what you got, right, you got to learn how to finish it. You got to, first of all, understand how to apply it. So, when you understand how to apply it, everybody needs to wear something called a primer on their eyelids. A primer. You can use it in the form of a base. You can use it in the form of a concealer. You can use it in the form of, of something that mats down on the eye, which is what I prefer. Um, and it kind of blended out so it's not too gunky. And I'm, I'm talking through this now, but I'm actually going to demonstrate it in a second. So once you get it on, you can take your eyeshadows. And how many of you use, use those, little, those little sponge things that come with the eyeshadow? Y'all use them? Tell the truth. I know it. Put, put your, who, who else use them? Uh-huh. She in the back like, okay. That's right. Tell the truth. The truth going to set you free tonight. So those little things, those are cute. Those are cute. But do yourself a favor and toss those in the garbage when you get them, okay? Because what they're going to do, first of all, they're going to create a whole bunch of bacteria because that little sponge, a sponge in nature, literally absorbs things, right? So anytime you put something on your live active skin, which means it, you know, the natural oils and all those things, they're gonna soak up in that sponge. So every time you have those natural oils in that sponge, every time you use it, you're taking whatever bacteria that has grown in that sponge and putting it back on your eye. Every single time, that's right. I'm, I'm, I want it to be very grotesque so that you guys can stop doing it. Throw those little things in the garbage. Get yourself a brush. It's gonna, trust me, it's gonna save you so much more time. It's gonna cost you, okay, 20 bucks. You can, you can, you can scratch out 20 bucks. Get you a nice brush. Put it to the side. You can shampoo that brush. You can keep it. You can clean it. You can use it forever if you take care of it. You buy that $20 brush one time, $6 brush, $5 brush, whatever. A brush. We need a brush. And then you take it, and instead of you taking the brush and brushing it frivolously across the eye, and when you finish, you have all of your eyeshadow right here and right here because you pushed it from side to side, that's the wrong thing to do. You always want to, my, my, my veterans know, what do we do with that eyeshadow? We, we tap it, we press it. So you're going to press it right into, into place. So once you place, once you, first of all, once you understand placement, you got to know how far up to go on the shadow, and you got to know how far on the outside or how far on the inside to go. Those are all important things. So when you're using your eyeshadow, you should never, ever, 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 ever go past the brow bone. Does everybody know what the brow bone is? That's this little thing right above the eye that comes out right before you get to the socket. So when you're doing your makeup, you should go from side to side, pressing it on the shape of the eye, but not going above that brow bone. Everybody got it? You got a visual? 
Okay, so good. We're going to make it through this class real quick tonight. I love it. And everybody's going to be able to play. Um, and something else that I want to do, something a little bit different, is once I, I demonstrate it with you, how many of you bought your BFFs tonight? Bought your friends? About your friends? Okay, you bought a friend? Well, if you didn't bring a friend, reach over and meet a friend because that's what we're going to do. So what I want you to do is I want you to take some time and use our little testers that we have of the eyeshadows, and I want you to kind of practice it on each other. You can take five minutes and do that. It's not going to hurt you, right? And if y'all need some brushes to practice with, I got plenty of brushes in my bag. Just make sure I get them back because, you know, you know, we got a reputation of stealing. I mean, don't you let me have to pat you down at the door. Because won't nobody leave until that brush count is back where it's supposed to be. We all right with that? Okay. So, <laughs> I have to stop and laugh sometimes because I crack myself up. So, um, but I want you guys to have a little chance to play because a lot of times when you get this information here, you, you, you get it, you're excited, you're fired up. By the time you go home and wake up tomorrow morning and try it, you're defeated. You're like, oh, I can't do it. I can't get it right. Because you don't really realize what the mistakes were before you had a chance to practice it on yourself. So we'll give you a few minutes to kind of do that as well. You guys okay with that? All right, good. So you guys all right so far? You got anything for me? Any questions? Yes, talk to me. So as a dark skinned woman. Yes. Okay. Well, when it comes to color, it's just about confidence. You have to be confident in what you're wearing because you can put, you can literally wear anything you want. Anybody in here, I don't care how light or how dark you are, you can wear anything that you want. You just have to know and understand how to do it. There are limits. Now, because you have a beautiful palette with 16 new shades, that doesn't mean you put all 16 on at the same time. Okay, so I'll see you trying to put a green. Let me put this yellow in the corner. If I lift up right here, I got a little space for the red. No, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to pick a shadow and we're going to stick with it. Okay, somebody else um, brought up a point about matching your shadows with your clothing. Matching your shadows with your clothing. So if you're going to wear, if you're going to wear a burnt orange situation, are you going to do like a burnt orange eye eyeshadow? Green, shimmer. You could. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you do your makeup or when you choose your makeup, you choose your makeup to complement you. So your makeup should complement you. So if you look great in a purple shadow, nobody's going to care if you're wearing red a red blouse because it looks great on you. So when you wear something that complements well, it's usually something that goes with your eye color, something that goes with your hair color, something that complements your complexion. And there's, a, there's usually a number of colors that you can wear. It's not like you can just wear, I'm only gonna be able to wear this silver. No, you, there's a number of colors that you can wear. So you have to understand what works for you and your complexion. And if it works for your complexion, then by all means, please wear it. Please wear it. And no, you don't have to wear a green shadow because you're wearing a green shirt. You wear, a green shadow because you want to. Make sense? And if, I, if anybody else tell you any different, tell them to call me because I don't mind having that debate. Okay? So it's a color theory thing. So you can really like, you know, you should never be matchy matchy. You know, I, 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 I'm matchy matchy because I'm lazy. Like I'll put on a gray sweatshirt, some gray jeans, and maybe some gray sneakers just because I'm lazy. But you should never be matchy matchy. That's a fashion dope. And if you do, it's called being monochromatic, which is not horrible, but it's just a fashion don't. It's not like you don't wear an orange shadow, orange, orange um, blush, and an orange lipstick. There are people that do that, but you should not necessarily do it. You kind of want to highlight things on your face, kind of let people see the different dimensions. Does that help you? Okay. Any other questions about how you're going to wear this eyeshadow? Shimmers. Let's talk about shimmers. People ask me all the time, should older women wear shimmers? I'm going to be very honest with you. Older women can wear whatever they want. If, you, if you're 90, you deserve to be able to wear whatever you want. The problem is we just want to make sure that you do it properly. So now when you wear shimmery shadows, yes, they do show the creases in your lids a little bit more. So sometimes they can make you look a little bit aged, if you will. So if you have those, those fine lines when you put your shadows on, try to avoid some of the shimmers, but there are still ways that you can wear them. Use a matte shadow all over, something without shine. Use it all over on the lid and use your shimmers to highlight, like either in the center of the eye, in the corner of the eye, or either under the brow. And that will give you the eye so you can still wear your shimmers and you can also be matted. Okay? So 
No, if, if you have if you have the fine lines on your lid, like crepey, crepey lids, like if your lids kind of overhang a little bit and they're kind of crepey, when you put um, shadows, shimmery shadows on them, it shows all of the all of the texture in the lid. So what you want to do, you can still wear them, but just try to avoid wearing them on the entire eye. Maybe do half the eye with the shimmer and the other half with something matte, and it, and it really will give you that balance. Okay? Now, there are two models that I have in here tonight. One, I want to do an eyebrow demo, and the other, I'm going to do an eyeshadow demo. Is that okay? All right, sounds good to you guys? Am I boring you yet? Because if y'all get bored, like, y'all look like y'all falling asleep. Y'all get up and run some laps in here in a minute. Wait a minute, y'all done had them good cupcakes over there in that corner. Oh, I know what y'all doing. Y'all not fooling me. So let's do my brow demo first. Brows, come on up. Now feel free to come closer, take before and after pictures, do any of those things, because I, I welcome all that. Come on, have a seat for me, ma'am. I heard we got a firecracker in the house tonight. All right. So if you guys want to take your before pictures, you can come close and do so now. Now is a good time. You can stand close. You can do whatever you need to do. Ask me questions because tonight is going to be the night. All right, you guys ready? So I'm going to step away from the mic, which means I'm going to not be as amplified, but you guys will still be able to hear me, I promise, okay? No, you don't have to. I'm sure they can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Y'all got me back there? All right. So we good. So a lot of people, what do you guys prefer to do eye eyebrows with? Do you prefer like a shadow? Do you prefer like a pencil and a br uh, pencil? Or do you prefer a shadow and a brush? Shadow and brush. Anybody else? Shadow and brush, pencil? Shadow and a brush, pencil? Okay. Yes. Okay, is that better for y'all? Yeah. Okay, so what I think that like when you do put anything on your face, it, sh it should be balanced because what happens is your natural face has its own balances, right? You can see like natural contours sometimes in your face. You can see natural like um, highlights sometimes in your face. And like when you put a, a foundation on to even the skin tone, you basically take out all of the dimensions that you put on. So your face is now flat, which means in order for you to make this work, you're going to have to add some things back into your complexion to make it work. You're going to need some blush to make you look alive again. You're going to need a little bronzer to warm you up a little bit. These are some of the things that you have to make sure that you add. So when you, same thing with doing eyeshadow. When you're doing an eyeshadow, you don't just put an eyeshadow on and say, okay, eyeshadow's done. You have to finish the look. You have to balance it. You're going to need some liner. You're going to need some mascara. And then if you don't have brows, you're going to need to fill those brows in, which brings me back to your point. Yes, you are being lazy. Fill those brows in. Everybody needs to have a complete look. Brows frame the face. And sometimes when you're, when you're like running late, you're running behind, sometimes you can just throw a brow on with a little bit of tinted moisturizer and a lip gloss and you're good. Because that brow actually frames the face for you. So if you frame that face properly, then you'll be, you'll be good. So as, from all of our other classes, as you remember, I always emphasize brows. Always talk about brows. Brows are important. And I'm going to continue to talk about brows every class we do because if you catch on with those brows, then eventually you'll start growing to different things. And, it, and, and please don't feel overwhelmed tonight. You won't be able to take everything I say. You won't be able to take it home and do all of it tonight. So take a little bit at a time. If you, if you, if you get caught up with the brows tonight, let brows be your thing. Get your brows done, work on those brows, and the next time we see you in the class, we'll work on the next thing. And before you know it, by the end of next year, you'll have a full face. And you'll be able to host these parties at your house. Tell your girlfriends, look, I changed. This was my picture from 1986. This was my picture from last year. And, it's, and, and look at how I changed. I got my youth back. I got my, I, got my, I got my oomph back. And it all happens with makeup. All right? So we're going to do these brows here. 
I'm actually gonna start these brows with a brow, one of my favorite, um, it's called Brow Wow. It's one of my favorite products from She's the Boss. It's a, um, it's a little three kit set. It has a little wax that you use. The wax is perfect because the wax actually helps you to activate the color on the, um, on, the, on, the pen, on the powder. And it can also be used to sweep through the brows to make them like a little bit more tamed, if you will. But I'm gonna use this, brow, this wax today as a base, okay? Yes. You learn a new trick every time. So I'm gonna take the wax and I'm actually gonna just brush it in the area on her, on her brow bone where I'm actually going to make a, um, Make the brow. That's right. If you're missing it, you better come see because y'all gonna think I'm a magician up here. Then I'm gonna take a slanted brush. The Mac World, this is the 263 brush. It's actually the one with the little slanted head on it. They have a bunch of different ones that come with different widths, but the 263 works well for me because it's not too thin, but it, it's thick enough that I can actually get it drawn on, okay? Now, I know that we have a video online about brows, which if you need more um, information, you can actually talk to Lakita tonight to get the website and whatever it's gonna um, be to unlock it, unlock the website so that you can use the tutorial so that you can have something at home to go over this. But this is actually the easiest way to do a brow. Now when you're starting your brow, your brows start from, if you take your brush and put it on the end of your nose and point it straight up, this is where your brow should start. So if your brow is starting shorter than this, then you need to extend the brow on the inside a little bit. So this is the start of the brow. From the corner of the nose through the center of the eye, so if I go right through the center of the eye, this is where the arch is. The arch is the highest point of the brow. Okay, then from there, the end of the nose to the end of the eye, where that socket ends, this is where your brow should end. Now, if I look up and see your brows way over here, I know you've been looking at the Mac girls, because that's what they do. They'll start them in here, and they'll draw them and come to the hairline. You're like, is that your hairline? Is that your brow? Not sure. What are you doing? Are you, I'm not sure, I'm confused. So, to avoid that, it's like start, middle, finish. Everybody got it? Okay. To the high, from the start to the highest point. Everybody see that? Pretty bold, right? Then I'm going to take it from there. I'm going to bring my arch around and I'm going to bring it out to the corner. Now, why did I not bring it down? Somebody asks that all the time. My brow should come down. Your brow should not come down because if your brow goes down, it's going to make a sad face. We don't like sad brows. We like our brows up and out. Okay? Now you see what I've done so far? Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do now, this is the part that surprises everybody because you can get this part easy when you get home. It's like, okay, I got that, I got that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top of the brow and I'm gonna follow the same thing. Make it meet somewhere up here on the top. See what I did? Can you guys see it? If you want to walk up and have a quick look, you definitely can. I'm not going to be upset. You're not going to throw me off my game. So I started here. I drew the bottom line. I went up top, and I matched it and made them come together. You see what I did? So now, instead of dipping in more product, I don't need to dip in more product. I got enough product on her skin already. So what I'm gonna do is take this same brush that I have not dipped again, and I'm literally going to brush this up right into that center and fill in the blanks. This brow is so easy, I can teach this to six-year-olds. Can you see that? Now, brow is still not done because there's something else that I need to do here. You see that block at the beginning of this brow? 
See that hard line right here at the beginning of this brow? I hate that. Absolutely hate that. So what I do is I take my brush with no product and I literally bring it out backwards to blend it. Now when you guys get home, I don't know what you've been doing with your brows before, but all of a sudden your, your technique will change and you won't ever realize what you were doing wrong before. You're just gonna realize that you're doing something right now because you're gonna like the outcome of your brow. When it comes to brows, um, I know, you know, you take the black brow, I mean, the black lip gloss, the eyeliner for the brow, brows. Um, how about brows? Please do not put a black liner in your brow. Unless you dye your hair like, like charcoal, jet black, you don't need a black line, a black brow. You should always use a brown, because naturally, you should always use a, a dark brown in the place of a black. Even if your hair is super dark, unless you kind of just got a look that you're going for, you should never use black in your brow. Okay? Now again, there are, are exceptions because there, there are fashion woes that you can take care of, but like from a day to day, you literally don't want to have um, those kind of brows. All right, you guys see that brow? You guys think you're gonna repeat this brow? Maybe? And like you don't have to draw them as, as, you can draw them like however you like them. If you like them a little thinner, you can draw them thinner. If you like them fuller, you can draw them fuller. But there, and I'm gonna show you another technique to how you can clean it up a bit too. But I'm gonna even it out so that the people on this side won't feel left out. Cause they're in the comfy couches. They're like, we don't wanna move. So, start of the brow here. Go underneath that. Draw that brow out. It's right on, it's right on the skin. It's right on the skin because what that helps me to do is it helps this color to be received a little bit more. It's like priming the skin for it. Up. And what do we do on the end of our brow? Down and out. No sad brows. No sad brows. Your, your brows are always going to be sisters, not twins. You know what that means? You can, you can tell they're in the same family, but they're never going to look exactly alike. Okay? And I don't care if you look at, like, you can look at Beyonce's brows. They're never exactly the same. Ever, ever, ever. They just don't grow the same. It just doesn't happen. You want them as close to matching as you can, you know, but they don't have to be exactly the same. So is it okay if you try to use a stencil? Absolutely. I love a stencil. I love a stencil brow. We have stencils. Oh, if we have stencils, y'all here? So if you can't get this brow, you can literally hold it up and brush it right on, and it'll fill it in the same way. I actually use stencils when I airbrush because sometimes in a pinch of a situation I have to airbrush brows because it takes a little less time, a lot less time actually. You guys with me? Yes. See what I did? No? Yes? You like what I did? So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the foundation. And I'm going to clean this brow up. That kind of night tonight. <laughs> y'all start playing that sad music and y'all get to falling in love and be mad and <laughs> upset. Stay away from that sad music. So I do the foundation above and underneath the brow, and what that does is it helps to clean the brow up. So any mistakes that you may have made in penciling the brow in, because when, you, when you're at home, you're gonna see this, this unhappy stage. Like, uh, I'm not sure, you're like, oh, I didn't do it right. But you absolutely did it right. You just gotta go to the next level. Remember I said we gotta learn how to finish the project? So this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna finish the project.
Well, see, that, that's a little bit relative. Um, for me, I like to do foundation first. I do foundation because I am, like the skin inspires me. Once I get that skin perfect, then everything else just falls in place. There are some people who are inspired by eyes, so they do eyes first. Some people are inspired by brows, they do brows first. So it really just depends from person to person. Like because her brows are so faint, I would have done her brows first before I did anything. Because that's what's gonna guide me to what I wanna do next, okay? This is how we started your mom, right? She was a good monster because whenever I came to town, she would cook dinner for me, for me to come and draw her brows. <laughs> She'd be like, come on over here to the house, Fred, whatever you want. You ain't got to wait on key to them. Come on. Now look how perfect that brow is. I think you guys should take your, get your close-ups on this one too so that you can see the before and the after. get you some drinks. <laughs> you are so welcome. Thank you for being my model. Thank yes. you. Yes. There's a question about brows. Yes. You smudge a little bit, yeah. So um, that's why the brow kit is important because that's something that should be in your in your little bag. Because like if you have, if you were to smudge your brow, you can literally take the little brush inside and fill in the area where you smudge. So it would definitely help to have the kit as well. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. So a lot of times with those tattoo situations when they when they there's they're not forgiving. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But they're not as forgiving as like let's say a shadow is or maybe even a pencil because you can actually fill it in, but there's a way that you can take like a clean mascara wand and literally brush through it and give it that same stroke to make it look natural or to just to fill it out a little bit, okay? Does anybody have any questions about the brows? Anybody have questions about the brows? So in a few minutes, I'm gonna give you a chance to kind of like play with your neighbor, get a little brow on, see what y'all can do, and then I'll walk around, kind of help y'all along the way, okay? Good, yes. All right, now eyeshadow, eyeshadow. Now I have an eyeshadow model. Can you come on up for me, please, eyeshadow model? <laughs> Look at y'all campaigning. <laughs> Don't give her a brow. I'm gonna save that for you because y'all partner up and you can give her a brow. Show her what you learn. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. 
All right, guys, do you guys want to see a little bit of before and after? So if you want to get your camera out, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out, I'm going to give her um, an everyday eye first, and then I'm going to pump it up to something for holiday, okay? Does that work? I want to keep it simple for you guys because I'm not trying to give y'all five shadows and an eye. I'm going to give y'all two shadows. The first shadow is going to be her daytime look, and then we're going to pump it up with the second shadow. Does that work? Because I, I want you guys to really be able to understand, because I can sit and I can carve in her face, and she can look like a different person by the time I'm done. But what I want to do is to make it practical for you guys, because you'll never learn it if I stand here and flex my muscles. It's not about what I can do. If y'all want to see what I can do, for it for face on IG. That'll bless your life, I promise. But if you want to like really grasp it and learn it, then this is the way to do it, all right? Okay. I got you, I got you, I got you. I came up here with you in mind. Is everybody still good on time? Y'all all right? Am I boring y'all yet? Okay. Because I don't like the border people. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prime the eyes a little bit. I'm going to prime the eyes, and I'm actually going to use the same wax that I used for the um, brows. And it comes into the brow kit. Yep. This is, the, this is the eyebrows from She's the Boss. Exactly. And let me just encourage you guys, if you know somebody that, that's challenged with eyebrows, this is the perfect gift for Christmas. I'm just saying. And it's not offensive. It's not offensive. You can actually just like send it, you know, send, get it shipped right to your house. I'm all about giving makeup for Christmas. I did? They think they get free product. They think they get free product? Give it to them. Give it to them. But then just send out that little invoice in the mail. <laughs> Actually, the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a. Yes. Yes, I'm ready to answer. Yes. What happened? She did all right. She did all right. She did all right. She like she put a little time in this morning, this afternoon. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out. She's the next. She's the boss. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. 
So what I'm going to do with my eyeshadow, remember we talked about the shadows. I'm actually going to use something a little shimmery first. This is going to be my holiday shadow, but I'm going to use it as an everyday look. Because what happens is you'll buy something and you feel like, oh my gosh, they bought it for holiday. I can only wear this for an event. That is not true. It's just about knowing and understanding how to use this shadow. I'm going to show you this particular shadow that you can use on a daily basis. If this is your favorite color, this is your favorite neutral shadow, you can use this on a daily basis. You ready? So I have a flat shadow brush, this guy. Not the, Not the spongy brush. And I'm just gonna clean it down a little bit because I used it before and it has a little product. So I clean my brushes thoroughly. So I'm gonna clean it down a little bit. So this is a, a brush that I actually love to use. Good question. How often should you be cleaning your brushes? You should be shampooing your brushes. Like if you're doing them, let's say you, you use them seven days a week, you should shampoo these brushes once a week, at least once a week. But if you are a professional and you have a professional kit, you should be, using, you should be cleaning these brushes after each person. You can use them with baby shampoo. They, baby shampoo works very well, and that's actually what I like to use. Um, sometimes makeup removers work as well. They have like a little oil in them that helps to break it down. But what I do is because I have about four sets of brushes that I use because I don't always have time to stop and shampoo them at night. So what I do is in between like uses, I actually use my makeup removers, my makeup wipe remo removers to clean in between. So it gives me a quick clean and it also sanitizes the brush until I'm able to shampoo it and get it fully done. Okay? I, I let them air dry. So that's why I have like four sets because like while one's washing, while one's drying, I can just pick up the next set and go. So like if I'm, let's say if I'm in Baltimore for the next three days working on a, a, a set, I'll have three sets of brushes or two sets at least. So I'll have, I'll shampoo one tonight and let them dry in the bathroom while I'm at work the next day. And then I'll come back and switch them out that night. Yes. I use I don't I don't have a particular brand of brushes that I use. I just use brushes that I love. She's the boss does have a nice set, a nice starter set. And to be honest, you only really need about five five to six brushes to start with. You know, you know, you, you, we feel like we fancy when we get like twenty brushes and we got them in a belt, and half of the time you don't use most of the ones there. So you only really need about five or six brushes to start with. Okay. So we have this brush, it's clean. This brush is by, oh, this is a Delium brush. I actually bought this Delium brush because I love natural fibers. Everybody's going synthetic now, and synthetic is great. I love it, but something about those natural fibers that really like get my attention. So I like to use natural brushes. Um, this one is a squirrel, and no, we didn't kill the squirrel to get his hair. We just caught him and gave him a little haircut and said, go ahead, we good, your hair grow back, stop crying. So we just gave him a little haircut, okay? That's for all my, pe my Peter people. If I got some Peter people here, Peter people, if you're in the hotel, we sorry, we just gave him a haircut, we can kill him, we promise. Okay, haircuts are good, everybody gets a haircut, okay? Yes. So I'm gonna take my shadow, and I'm actually gonna take my brush, my flat brush, you see that's flat? Take my flat brush, and I do this all the time to make sure that it's dried out so I don't have any wetness that transfers into my, um, so I'm gonna take it and I'm actually gonna use the flat end of the brush. A lot of people like to go in here. When I was teaching my mom how to do her eyeshadow, the first thing she wants to do is do this and then she thinks she's gonna rub it like this. No, that little tip is not enough. You wanna use the side of that brush and I wanna saturate it. You see, the side of that brush is saturated. You might not be able to see the color from where you are, but the side of that brush is saturated. So what I'm gonna do is take this and I'm literally gonna press it right on her lid, right where I put the wax. only put this eyeshadow on her lid on her lid her lid look at your neighbor and say lid look at your other neighbor and say only the lid so the lid is going to be from the lash line to the crease so you know where you open that eye and that eyeball kind of hides the top of that crease that's where you stop you go from the lash line which is where the lashes grow out of to that little crease right here and you go right in the shape of the eye as you can see we did here Got it? That's all you putting on. So when you get ready, not the whole eye. 
Don't let me catch you in the courtroom looking like headlights. Because I'm going to say, Your Honor, I object. <laughs> I think you need to hold her in contempt because that eyeshadow is it is it's a wrong. <laughs> I couldn't think of another um, law word, so it's just wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that we've gotten this eye done, I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. Let's match it. Okay. So tell me what I'm going to do. I'm going to take what kind of brush? Flat brush. A flat squirrel. I love it. <laughs> I like a natural fiber brush, but you can use synthetic. I like a natural brush, so I'm using a natural brush, and I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to saturate it on one side of the brush. See, just one side is done, okay? Then I'm going to press it right on her lid from side to side. We're going to press it on her what? Okay. Trust me, guys, I'm not just saying this because this is She's the Boss, a She's the Boss event, but these are truly things that I have in my kit that I actually use, and they are, it's absolutely amazing. Sometimes when I'm cheating a little bit and, like, my skin is really oily and I have to go, like, on set or on a camera or something, I take a little bit of the primer and I put it right in my T-zone, and it literally mats me out instantly. Mats me out instantly, and it's really, really good. products on me. She done advanced. So you guys see what this is? You see what her eyes look like? Turn that way a little bit for me. See what her eyes look like? Y'all see that? This is a nice neutral everyday shadow that she can use. She can, she can wear this to the Christmas party or she can wear this to the office. Now, here's the problem that I have. I have a problem. It's not a big problem, but it's a problem. Everybody think this is finished. Like my shadow's done. I'm good. I'm good. Absolutely not. Sis, if you walk out the house with your, ha with your eyes looking like this, we're going to have some issues. Okay? Okay? And, and, you know what? It's, it's not even about the blending. I can let you get away if you don't blend that. But if you go outside with just this and you don't have any liner, any. Oh, yes. That's what we're not doing. Oh, yeah, do that. See? Yeah, okay. She said she don't do that. She's safe. So. So what I would do is because I'm only going to do one shadow, and it, remember, this shadow can be any color. If you want to do a smoky eye, you can do this with a black. You want to do it with a navy. You can do this with a blue, a green, a neutral shade. You know, for, for, my, for my ladies that are very corporate, you can do something that's very close to your skin tone that just put, you know, just kind of mats it out and makes it look really smooth. You can do that just on the lid and leave it. But the next step is... You stop right here. You do? She the boss. She the boss. <laughs> she ain't the boss today. She's the student. <laughs> She's the student. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a blending brush. A blending brush is this guy. They can be natural or synthetic. This one just happens to be a natural brush because I like natural brushes. This one, I forget. Uh, this one is um, goat. This one is goat hair. The white one is goat hair. We just gave him a haircut. We didn't kill him. Just gave my hair cut. So this one is goat. And what I like about these brushes is they are a little bit loose. You see how the, the bristles are long and they're loose? So what happens here is when you take product and you, you dip this into a product, it holds the product in so it doesn't release all the product at one time. Anytime you have a loose bristle brush, it kind of retains some of the product, which is why when we use powder brushes, we use those big fluffy brushes because we don't want to just take a whole bunch of powder and press it onto our face. We just literally want to buff the shine off. So it holds enough product in, but it gives you enough product each time you use it okay so that's why we use this this brush this brush also has the ability because it does have the ability to hold product it can actually be used to take product away so by using a clean brush like this in her crease you know the crease is the thing that's after the lid where we stopped so if I go right into her crease with this back and forth and sometimes in little circles like this it tends to take off the extra concentration of product that's there and it makes it look like it's blended so it blends it away. That's why this is called a blending brush, okay? All right, you, everybody got it? Okay. So I'm gonna take this brush 
and I'm literally going to start on the inner, inner corner or outer corner, and I'm making little circles going back and forth, little circles back and forth. And this is so easy. You can literally do this yourself. You don't need my help at home. You don't need anybody to watch you. You can literally do this, and it's taking off some of that shadow. And see, if I go all the way up, you see how the shadow didn't transfer? It just literally softens it right in this crease. So it looks like she can actually go outside with that. Can you see the difference between the two eyes? I can. Yeah. Okay. So remember, you can do this with any shadow. This is your everyday look, okay? See it? A little, little shimmery, but it's okay. How long does it take to do a baby, not a full face, but maybe a partial face? Like, just to get you to quick run of So a quick run, let's say you, let's just give it an office look, because an office look is an everyday look. Let's say we can do a, a foundation, we can do an eyeshadow a mascara, a liner, brows, and a lip, and maybe a little bronzer or a little something on the cheek. That's about seven or eight products. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. Now, if you want to see a lot, now on the 3rd of, on the 4th of December, be watching my IG, because I'm going to start working with one of the girls from RuPaul's Drag Race. We're doing a red carpet together. I'm going to show you a lot of makeup. That's not a lot of makeup. Now, there may be a lot of products, but it's not a lot of makeup. Because here's the thing. You, can have a, you need a lot of products to finish the look. Because some people think, oh, I'm just going to get me a, a powder from MAC, and I'm going to draw my brows in, and I'm going to use that same pencil and draw my lip liner and put me some gloss on, my little four products. Mm, and you're going to look like four products. I, I hate to tell you that, but you're going to look like four products. So what I'm going to do... Yeah, so what I'm going to do is you're going you're gonna to stretch that out, make it eight products. You know, if you have to buy a product a month until you get it right, you know, just buy one. Don't break your bank. Just buy one and just keep building yourself until you have a full kit. That's how it works, okay? So now we got those eyes on. So now I'm going to show you how to finish this look. There are two things that I'm going to do. One is going to be an eyeliner and one is going to be a mascara, okay? Ready? I'm gonna set, I'm gonna um, clean my, my little my little pencil by sharpening it. it takes off that that layer of of, of um, uncertainty. Got to sharpen pencil there. All right, you ain't sure what's on there or who, what was on everybody else's eyes, right? So if you look up for me, what I'm gonna do for every day, just because I like a full liner, I'm actually gonna go the entire bottom of the eye. People are like, oh, you should not do the bottom of the eye because it's going to make your eye look smaller. No, it's going to make give your eye definition and shape. That's what it's going to do. Okay? So, oh my. so what you got to do, let me come closer. So what you got to do is you got to find a product that actually works well for you. Because sometimes there are certain things in products, and sometimes it could be the color. Sometimes the dyes are a little, um, they, they irritate you. So you just got to find something that works. I actually prefer a cold pencil, something that's very soft, and it goes on a lot smoother so it doesn't feel like you're struggling. Now, if y'all still using those little red Maybelline liners, the ones that y'all used to have to put the match to. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they still sell them. They still sell, right, she know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she know exactly what I'm talking about. They used to make these eyeliners in the 80s, and I know because my sisters used to do it, and I used to sit in the bathroom. My grandmother used to have this little vanity with a little soft plush chair, and I used to sit Indian style in the chair, and they would stand at the vanity and do their makeup, and I would watch them take a cigarette lighter, burn it until it looks like it's starting to move, uh-huh, and then they'll take it, and then they'll shake it out. Got to let it dry, but you got to get it before it gets hard again. Uh huh. And then you test it on your hand to make sure it ain't too too hot. And then you take it and you draw it on real smooth. Uh huh. Yeah, that ain't right. That 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 ain't right. That is of the devil. Cause I was confused. I was confused. So that's of the devil. Anything that confuses me is of the devil. Okay. <laughs> okay. So a lot of y'all don't like to do this part. You gotta draw that liner on the top of that lid. So here's the thing. When you're drawing your own liner on, this is what you do. You take the pencil and slant it. Don't try to use the tip of the pencil. Use the slant of the pencil. You hold your eye, 
And then you literally, so what you're doing is you're flattening out your eye a bit. And then you literally lay it on your lid and pull it straight across. So you got one eye? I do this. Uh -huh. I You can you can after you do it a while you'll be able to feel it. But what you can do, but what you do, is you can take little dots, make little dashes on the eye, and and then you can connect the dots. Mm -hmm. I love a pencil. I love a liquid liner. But the problem with the liquid liner is if you're not savvy with it, you're going to hate it, and you're never going to want to use it because it's going to scar you. So what I would say is to start with something, once you get the technique down, then you can take that liquid, and it'll give you the perfect, perfect line. But I, I love both. Now, what I'm doing, I'm going to show you this trick. Why you can use just one shadow. Open your eyes for me. You guys see the difference between those two eyes? And from a distance, you should be able to see that. And it's just something that she can do every day. So she's put a line on the bottom. She's put a line on the top. She's blended out the shadow, the one shadow that she puts on. So when you go to MAC, don't let them trick you into buying 15 shadows unless you want 15 because you can't wear all 15 at one time. Okay? So now that we've gotten that, there's a little trick that I want to show you. And that's what we want to do. We want to accentuate the eyes. Now we made the eyes perfect again. Now let's make them beautiful. So I'm going to take just a little brush. And I'm painting a little bit of the eyeliner onto the brush. See what I'm doing? This one is black. Mm -hmm. This one's black because we did black liner around the eyes. Okay. So now I'm going to go right over that line on the top. And I'm going to smudge this brush right into that line on top. And it's going to make it look like there's two shadows there. Open for me. Now it's blended down a little bit. Can you see that? It makes it a lot softer. So now she has two shadows when it's really just a shadow and a liner. If you need to come closer and have a look, please do. Now, here's the last part. Here's the last part. I'm going to take this mascara, and I'm going to make her eyelashes stand out a little bit. Okay. Now, every day in the office, depending on you, where you work, you may not need to put on a lash, or they may not allow a lash sometimes, depending on where we work. So you, but you still want to look pretty when you go in. So learn to embrace your own lashes, no matter how short or how thin or how whatever they are, because once you embrace them, then you don't feel so bad when you don't have to wear a lash. Okay. So here's my trick. I got to tell y'all this every time. So I take, my, I take my mascara out of the little thing, right? And there's always that little goop at the end, right? What do we do with that? We wipe it on the side, don't we? Yeah, we wipe it on the sides. That's the wrong thing to do. You know why? Because if your mascara says, this, this mascara says it is going to give us volume and curling. So, yep, she's the boss. This is going to give you volume and curl. And I love this mascara. Remember, um, my friend Marit Brown Clark, gospel singer, came in and I showed this. And she was like, I got to get it. She stopped right in the middle and ran to the back to buy this mascara because it is really that nice. So, um, yeah, she's the boss. So, what I do is I take the product that's on the end of that and I wipe it on the lash. Why? Because if this says it's going to volumize and curl, I'm going to need the product and the brush to make it work. So if I take the product away, it's only going to do half the job because I'm using half of the product. So I'm going to use both of them and watch what happens.
Now, do y'all see the difference between that face? Between those two eyes? Look that way. Can y'all see the difference between that? This is what we call a finished look. These are the three or four steps that you have to do. If you're going to wear eyeshadow, if you're going to wear eye makeup, you need to make sure you wear a liner and a mascara. So remember before at the beginning when I was saying we got to make sure that we finish the look? This is what I mean by finishing the look because now we have a finished look. She can wear this every day. She can go to work with this. And she can literally, once you get that science down, no matter which color she, shoot, she chooses, she can have five colors laid out. And she just chooses the one that she wants every day and goes to work with this look. And she can have this done in five minutes. Five minutes. She can go turn the coffee pot on, come back, do her eyeshadow, go back and drink her coffee. That quick. I know that's right. Come on, ready. How many other ready people I got? Everybody like, oh, maybe. Okay, I'm going to give y'all a few minutes. been listening to Mary Kay because that's what Mary Kay taught you Mary Kay and Lancome um, Mary Kay and Clinique that's what they teach you you got to put one color here one color here and then one color here that yep that's what they try to tell you but that's just that's just a consumer technique that's just to, to make you buy it yeah. yeah and she's wearing one shadow one pencil and one mascara look how great that looks so you got I think you guys can handle doing this on a daily basis right I think this is a great start for you. You can actually take your shadows, whatever color you want, take your shadows and make it work. If you want to take an after picture of this, please feel free to do so now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another shadow and I'm going to show you how to make this into an evening holiday look. How's she going to tell me what I got to do? How's she going to tell me? How's she going to tell me? What I'm going to do? <laughs> I know she wanna she wanna look, baby. She gonna go sit over there at that bar. Uh-huh. Oh. You go home to your husband, you put my look, you might get a new ring tonight. <laughs> Mess with me, baby. You know. <laughs> grown folk, grown folk, grown folk, grown folk. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to update this look with a new shadow. I'm actually gonna use a navy blue shadow to make this into an evening holiday look. Navy blue, I like navy. Navy is a great alternative to black. So for you ladies that are always feeling like you need something dark but are tired of black, maybe black makes you look tired after a while, you can definitely use a navy in the place of that. I love it, I love a navy. So we've already primed her. She's already ready for like the daytime. Now this is the scenario. She's at work. She, she had to work late. She's the person that had to close the office but they're having the holiday party um, an hour after she finishes. She's not gonna have time to drive to Annapolis because she lives in Annapolis but she works here in Baltimore. So she has her little eyeshadow kit in her bag but she doesn't have to bring an entire case because she has her face on already. So basically she'll just bring her touch up like her powder, her lip products, and an extra eyeshadow that we're gonna use to pump up her look for the evening, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flat brush, this one is synthetic, 
this brush is synthetic and you can tell it's synthetic because um, when you buy it, you ask them, is it natural or synthetic? And they'll tell you. This one is the MAC brush. It's the 222 and it's actually one of my favorite brushes from MAC. So with this, I'm actually going to just, same thing, saturate it on one side. You see that? Saturate it on one side. Now, I'm going to take her eye and split it in half. So if I split her eye in half, I'm going to put the darker on the outside and let it blend into the, the shimmer that's already there, okay? And here's what it's going to do. Looks a little scary, right? No? Look pretty good? Okay. You want to turn that way for that side? See what that looks like? See how easy that was? I literally just did half of the eye. I did it in the shape of like a C, like I made a Pac-Man in the corner. Like a little Pac-Man, and I brought it over halfway. See what it did? Y'all done got quiet on me. I think y'all getting tired. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. absolutely right. I think every woman should have seven things in their purse. Seven things and maybe two brushes. And that, and that equates a small kit like this. And in that seven things, you should have your foundation powder, whether it be a two-in-one, like a dual powder where you can match the powder. It goes on. It looks sets like you're wearing a powder on a foundation. You can have either that or a pressed powder to take the shine off. You're going to need your eyeliner. You're going to need your lip liner and your lip product. That's five. And you're going to need your your two brushes, which will be a powder brush, and something either a lip brush or shadow brush, maybe a blending brush for the eyes. And then um, you're gonna need like your, your bronzer or your blush touch up. And those are the, like the seven things that you're gonna need in your kit, you know, because everything else is at home on your bathroom counter because you don't need to take everything with you. You just need your touch up situations, all right? So now that I've gotten those shadows on, I'm literally gonna go back to my blending brush Got a little blending brush here, and I'm literally gonna blend that line right out of that crease just like I did before, okay? Now we have easily given her a foundation look for the holiday party. Nice? Easy? All right. Well, this has been my model for eyes tonight. Do you guys have any questions for me? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, at this point, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to um, practice with a partner. Let's take, let's take 10 minutes, only 10 minutes. Find you a partner. You can do a brow. You can do two brows. You know, um, let, let's, let's, let's practice. Let's get it going. I have a few things up here that I don't mind sharing with you guys, but just make sure my brushes find their way back, okay? Okay? All right. Her question was, when you have shadows that like glittery, sometimes you get what we call the fallout, so it's on the cheeks. So when you know you're doing something glittery, save your foundation to last. Do the eyes first so that you can fix it, okay? So, and I think this gentleman is gonna do your brows for you. That's why I saved them. <laughs> uh-huh, oh Lord, call him, call him. All right guys, so please take, take about 10 minutes. I'm gonna time you, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to play, okay?